Hancock et al. 2011, Language of Psychopaths. Background. What is a psychopath? Psychopathy is a well-known disorder which is most commonly characterised by certain types of antisocial behaviour. Specifically, these include behaviours such as lack of empathy and remorse, narcissism, impulsivity and risk-taking, and inclination towards manipulating people and being violent and other more general egotistic traits. Throughout history, various definitions and conceptions of what psychopathy is and is not have been put forward, which have sometimes been contradictory. At the most basic level, psychopathic behaviour appears to be focused primarily on fulfilling the most basic and material needs. Defined by Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs as food, shelter and sex. Whereas higher levels, whereas higher level needs such as self-esteem, meaningful relationships and spirituality are not likely to be of interest. Despite only representing around 1% of the general population, previous studies have estimated that between 15 and 25% of the prison population consist of psychopaths, which means that they are hugely overrepresented in the criminal population. This has created a need for psychologists and the prison system as a whole to better understand psychopathy in order to help mitigate the potential risks of psychopaths to society and rehabilitate those who are in prison. Professor Hancock of Cornell University, New York, devised a study, the first of its kind, into the language of psychopaths using sophisticated text analysis software to understand whether there are any unique qualities in the language that psychopaths use. Prior to this, there had been little research conducted on the speech used by psychopaths. Two studies conducted in 2003 and 2006 by Professor Hare at the University of British Columbia had suggested that psychopaths have specific combinations of social, cognitive and emotional characteristics that are different from the general population. Other studies, such as Ray et al. in 2003 and 2004, found that psychopaths had certain neural deficits that appeared to have biological underpinnings. However, Hancock was the first to study these specific qualities displayed by psychopathic language using highly sophisticated, quantitative text analysis tools. AIM The study by Hancock et al. examined the features of crime narratives provided by psychopathic offenders to find out whether the language they used has unique characteristics compared to non-psychopathic offenders. Sample The study consisted of a volunteer sample of 52 male prisoners in Canada, all of them convicted of first or second degree murder or manslaughter, who had admitted their crime. These included 8 who had committed first-degree murder, 32 second-degree murder, and 10 manslaughter. The sample was split into two groups, one of 14 prisoners who were identified as psychopaths, and the other group remaining of 38 non-psychopaths. There was no difference in the type of crime committed and no difference in mean age, 28.9 years, between the two groups. They also did not differ in the mean amount of time since the homicides were committed. Methodology for the purpose of the study, psychopathy was measured using the Psychopathy Checklist Revised Edition, or the PLCR for short, originally designed by Professor Hare in the 1970s with more recent revisions. The study used semi-structured interviews to gather data from participants via the stepwise interview technique, and the answers given during the interviews were then subsequently transcribed word for word. They were then analysed via two computerised text analysis tools, called the W Matrix and the DAL, the first of which looks at the meaning behind the words that are used, and the latter looking at the intensity and effective tone of language used. Procedure After the participants were classified into the two different groups, they were informed of the study's aims and procedure, to examine the manner in which homicide offenders recall their homicide offence through conducting interviews. The interviews consisted of two senior psychology graduate students and one researcher assistant, all who were unaware of how each participant had scored on the psychopathy checklist. The participants were asked to describe the homicides that they had committed in as much detail as possible, from beginning to end, leaving out no details, which was facilitated by the interviewer's use of the stepwise interview technique. This technique typically begins with the interviewers building a rapport with the interviewees by asking about their interests and putting them at ease, followed by both open-ended and closed questioning. The interview then ends with the interviewer thanking the interviewee for participating, asking if they have any further questions, and explaining what will happen next. The interviews conducted in the study lasted about 25 minutes and were recorded. Once the interviews had finished, they were transcribed and analysed by the text analysis tools. Results Overall, the participants produced over 127,000 words from all the interviews combined. It was found that those in the psychopath group averaged fewer words at just over 2,200, versus the non-psychopath group at just over 2,500 words, although this difference was not significant. Psychopaths produced approximately twice as many words that relate to basic physiological needs such as food, drink, and money when describing their crimes, whereas non-psychopaths used a significantly higher number of words relating to social needs such as family, religion, and spirituality. 
psychopaths also produce more subordinating conjunctions in their narratives in order to explain their actions, such as because, since, as, and so that. The extent to which the participants felt detached from their crime was examined through the analysis of the past and present tense verbs that they had used. It was found that psychopaths used more past tense verbs compared to non-psychopaths, such as stabbed, and fewer present tense verbs, such as stab. Psychopaths produced a higher rate of articles than controls, revealing that their language involved more concrete nouns, and their language was also less positive, less emotionally intense, and significantly less fluent. However, there were no significant differences overall in emotional content in relation to pleasantness or imagery. Conclusions The main conclusion drawn by the researchers was that psychopaths are more likely than non-psychopaths to describe their murders in terms of cause and effect, framing it as a rational and logical outcome of a plan and placing more emphasis on their own physiological needs rather than societal needs. The language used by psychopaths to describe their crimes have less emotional intensity and use less emotionally pleasant language compared to non-psychopaths, preferring to describe it as more in the past and psychologically distant. The narratives of powerful emotional events, such as a crime that they have committed, are also significantly less fluent and described in a more idiosyncratic way compared to non-psychopaths, and their justifications focus more on basic level of need, such as food and money. In other words, they are focused on a lower level of necessities, consistent with the conceptualization that psychopaths are focused on the lower level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Evaluations the study was a quasi-experiment since the independent variable whether the participants was rated as a psychopath was not manipulated. This meant that there was less control by the researchers which made the study more ecologically valid. However, since psychopaths represent only around 1% of the population, and the sample size of the main experimental group was only 14, it may not be considered representative of the general population. The participants were also all male, which made the results difficult to generalise to females within the prison population. The study used semi-structured interviews to gather data from two groups, which included the use of both open-ended and closed questions. This enables highly detailed qualitative information to be gained, and enabled the participants to give an unprompted, free narrative account of the crimes that they had committed. One drawback of this was that it may have made direct comparisons between each of the participants difficult, since the crimes were described in a different amount of detail with those in the psychopath group providing an average of just 2,200 words, and those in the non-psychopath group providing an average of just over 2,500 words. However, this was mitigated through the use of sophisticated text analysis software, which was able to provide a quantitative analytical comparison between the two groups. The internal validity of the study was strong, since the participants were not told the exact aim of the interview, and the possibility of the experimental bias was reduced since the interviewers were not told the prisoner's scores on the PCLR before interviewing them, which also mitigated any demand characteristics. Despite giving consent to take part in the experiment, the participants were not informed that they were being assessed for psychopathy, and it is not clear whether they subsequently received a debriefing after the interviews concluded, or a right to withdraw their data, which may raise ethical concerns. The sampling method used in the experiment was a volunteer example, which was the most practical method for recruiting individuals in psychopathy, since previous studies have shown that they are overrepresented in the prison population. However, this meant that only the individuals within a prison setting who had committed murder were studied, so the findings may not be representative of psychopaths outside of prison or those who had not committed murder. It is also possible that additional extraneous variables which were not screened during the recruitment process may have confounded the results. For example, other types of disorders such as borderline personality disorder are also present in a high percentage of the prison population, according to Connor Tao 2010 from George Mason University, which may in turn influence the types of language used by individuals that have both psychopathy and borderline personality disorder or other disorders.